Hey everybody, Fishman here, welcome to another video. This is a new video series, and one I'm really excited about. Uh, it combines two of my favorite things, uh, namely fish keeping and machining. So it's going to be a really cool build, and I might be a little too excited to get started on this because I have ordered uh, some bits and pieces for this. So most importantly, uh, some steel ball bearings and some silicon O-rings, uh, which are going to be involved in the valves and seals. And of course they haven't come in yet, and I don't want to wait, so I am going to rough out some sizes here. I find whenever I do these kinds of builds, uh, to help me visualize how they're going to interact with each other and give me an idea of what steps I need to do and whether the materials I've chosen are appropriate for what I want to do. I like to cut out a couple of pieces, uh, get them uh, roughly shaped to size, and see how they interact with each other and it'll helps me like i said visualize what i need to do next and whether or not i can say again that i've chosen uh, like the right sizes i mean i chose this tube here this is going to be the main cylinder uh, one of the two main cylinders i should say it is a one inch external diameter it's brass and it has a one eighth inch wall now part of the reason why i chose this is because the solid rod I already have in stock is uh, one inch in diameter and I didn't really want to go buying any more solid rod because it's uh, very expensive. And also uh, it's one eighth inch, uh, sorry, one inch diameter so it has a lot of volume and I want to move a lot of air here so it kind of fit all the criteria but again like I said I haven't really built this before so I want to um, get it so I can have a look at it, manipulate it, and get a feel for weights. And Because what I'm going to be using is just a small motor, and brass is not uh, light material. So here I've, I've knocked off a piece here. This is actually really kind of cool. I like it. It has a really nice smooth wall on the inside, so I won't really have to do any work with the inside of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn down a piece of this this is a one inch solid rod and i'm going to rough out what's going to end up being the piston now it's going to be a bit oversized but not a whole lot because I, again i don't really want to have too much of this material cut off because like i said it's very expensive so i'm just going to cut a little bit here i'm going to make about a i think it's, i settled on about an inch and a quarter of this and i'm going to not make it obviously can't be a friction fit this has to freely uh, move inside the tube without much in the way of wiggle room it has to be nice and smooth now i have ordered uh, silicon o-rings and they may or may not be involved in the pistons i mean if i get a smooth enough action with this uh, one that I, I can find reliable a little bit of a rather thick lubricant uh, might actually be sufficient to uh, prevent any air escaping. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna turn this down, and I'm going to get uh, probably within, I would say, two to three thousandths of an inch of the diameter of the cylinder. So that way, I will have, well, my test piece, a piece that I'll feel comfortable with. Now we're gonna get closer to the end of this. Uh, this is actually fairly lengthy. I took a lot of time doing this. That part right there, that I thought was just a little bit too loose of a fit. But the difference here is between here, where it doesn't go over at all, and here, where I think it is a little too loose, is two thousandths of an inch off the radius. So I'm going to approach that now as closely as I can. And I said, get a nice even fit. It'll be the difference between uh, where I have it a little bit too loose and uh, where I actually end up is only going to be, if I remember correctly, less than one thousandth of an inch off the radius. So that is a very fine amount. I mean, <laughs> way finer than I usually do with my uh, my lathe because it is an old machine. But here you go. This is, uh, like I said, now it is, it is not no wiggle room there. It is, actually does just fit just over. So here we go, I want to test this out, and you can see it does not rattle at all in there, which is great, and it slides really nice and smoothly. So like I said, this is the kind of thing that really helps me in design. Now that I know I can get the kind of tolerances I require for this build, I can move on to the next step, and that is to 
uh, finish roughing out the piston. So I'm going to uh, cut off uh, what I machined down in the solid rod, uh, flip it around, and then I'm going to machine the back end. This piston has to connect to the shaft that's going to run to the flywheel. So uh, I need to turn that down to the rough dimensions, which is going to be the, the shaft so far is a piece of flat bar. It's a uh, half inch uh, wide and an eighth inch thick. So I need to uh, get that, like I said, roughly down to that size. This is actually relatively straightforward and easy to do as far as turning goes. But what it will give me though is uh, the rough weight of the piston and because the motor I've chosen has to be able to move two of these in and out of uh, the cylinder. So I, I need to start getting feels for that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna turn this down and also it will help me visualize the next step for the piston which is to uh, go over to the milling machine and then uh, cut out uh, the slot that the rod's going to fit in. But we're getting a little, a little ahead of ourselves here. So uh, I'm going to turn this down. It's uh, like I said, it's an easy process to do because uh, it's very rough dimensions. So I'm actually turning down uh, a lot more on this. I'm pretty much taking off on each of these passes about half of what I took off uh, when I was doing uh, all those other passes before because I said it's, this is not uh, critical in any way shape or form it's just to get it down to something that I can have a feel for for uh, working with and the other thing I need to do after I'm done uh, this turn down here is I need to make a blank uh, there's gonna be two of these pistons so I need to uh, cut out one more of these and while I have uh, the lathe all set up and I know which numbers I need uh, I can turn that down quite quickly. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to bother cutting the back end of that yet uh, because I can use this one as a template for that. And of course, because I'm not turning this all the way down anyway, uh, it's not really that critical at this point. But I want to get uh, the, both pistons out. It also helps me keep an eye on uh, materials and how much of it I, uh, I'm using and how much I have left, that sort of stuff, just in case I don't want to end up uh, running out. So there, this is going to be the connecting rod and there's going to be a slot in uh, what I've just turned down there and there's obviously going to be a pin and all that sort of stuff. We'll get to that later and I'm probably going to use Delrin as I have a lot of that around as a uh, bushing for this because it's nice and smooth. Uh, it should uh, wear really well as well and obviously easily re replaceable so uh, it's something else I'm going to keep in mind for later on. But you can see how uh, each of these steps helps me figure out uh, next steps. And that is, <laughs> weird as it may be, that's how I like to think when I'm putting these together. Uh, trying stuff out, seeing how it works, and then using those bits of knowledge to get on to uh, the next thing I need to do. So that's all I'm going to do for this for now. All I'm going to do here is just, uh, all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to stick it in. Uh, fiddle around with it for a few minutes and then like I said I'm gonna get a good feel for it I actually kind of like this I think it is obviously oversized uh, but I haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna use those silicone o-rings yet which means I would need to put uh, two grooves in that and um, then see how it fits here as well I don't really want to do that I'll probably use the slug I made uh, to do that instead just to get a feel for that that way uh, but I can't do that until I get the materials in so you can see there's a little bit of flay in that, but not much. And uh, like I said, it moves <laughs> so nicely. And uh, maybe didn't play with enough Tinker Toys when I was a kid. So the other thing I need to do is machine the back end. And that is uh, at the top on the right there is, that's what that is. And what I've done is that has to be a friction fit. And it is. Uh, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to be uh, attaching that in uh, any like solid format I don't know yet uh, like I said I'll get to that as we go along I want this to be something I can take apart and fix and do things with so I may just use like a little uh, set screw or something so this is a nice tight fit not friction fit but uh, enough that uh, it doesn't fall out and this is the neat part here when I was doing this I can actually feel the resistance of that pocket of air that's getting squeezed out between uh, the walls and um, the piston and cylinder. It's, uh, 
it's interesting. I don't think it's tight enough for uh, what I need to do, but it was, uh, like I said, it's uh, an interesting step. So this is going to be the back end. This is where the, uh, the air is going to be supplied from. I'm going to drill a hole through here, and then there's going to be a cross-connecting T-hole, and one is going to go to, uh, well, each is going to go to a valve. One's going to be for the inlet, and one is going to be for the uh, exhaust. So uh, that is pretty much as far as I'm going to get today. And again, if you like the style of video, please like and or subscribe. This last clip here is just for humor. When I was in Tokyo, I was wandering around, and when I was in Akihabara, uh, all kinds of stuff you can buy. Uh, this was so cheap, I just couldn't say no to it, because it was a kind of souvenir that kind of suits my uh, personality, I guess, and I decided to pick it up. So this is just, a, you know, it's like my other one, but this is plastic and digital. So it's a little bit variable, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to give you guys some... Uh, rough numbers for this. Uh, this is the piston and it is uh, 22 millimeters and now I'm going to give you the dimensions for the uh, cap, the one that's friction fit and it, if I remember correctly, is 0.18 of a millimeter in greater in diameter which works out to a uh, seven thousandth of an inch so that's the kind of tolerances that are in this sort of thing uh, but it's kind of neat, I just thought I'd show it to you but this is nowhere near accurate by the way though so anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.